morning. I'm glad you joined me today online here at Living Joy Faith Center. It's a great day and we're going to start with prayer. So let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come before you this morning. We're so grateful. We're grateful for your love. We're grateful for your spirit. We're grateful for your word. We're so thankful, Father, that you sent Jesus for our souls and our salvation. Thank you, Father, for the goodness that you've shown us. Thank you, Father, for your intervention in our lives. Thank you for your protection, your healing power. Thank you for giving us all that we need in life. Thank you, Father. We just give you praise this morning. And Lord, this morning, I just commit myself to your word. I commit myself to speak your word for the Holy Spirit to move through me, that my words will be exactly your words, which you would have me say. Father, open our ears that we might hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Let us get revelation, inspiration, motivation to do what your Spirit inspires us to do. And Lord God, we just commit ourselves, our life, this service to you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we worship you, we worship you, we love you, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody, you say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have some good news for you this morning. And the good news is that God is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He is all sufficient. He is all bountiful. He is our almighty God. I'm so thankful. You know, he is more than enough to take care of any situation that we go through. No matter what we're faced up against, no matter what comes against us, he's more than enough. So there is no fear. Amen. He is Jehovah Nisi, hallelujah. He is our banner. He delivers, he saves, he gives us the victory. Say amen, say thank amen. you, Jesus. Yeah. He does miracles. He always causes us to triumph in Christ. Amen, amen, amen. We have to remember to be strong in him and do not fear. Praise the Lord. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. He steals our mind and our, and our hearts. He gives us peace that passes every understanding. He is all circumfacing of everything that we have need of. We have to learn to depend on him and rely upon his spirit to give us that grace of peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So he's going to rule our hearts with peace. So have no fear. Amen. He is Jehovah Siskanu. He is our righteousness. I'm going to tell you this morning that, that God will lead you in the paths of righteousness. He will not divert. He will not lead you down evil. He will not lead you down temptation. He's going to lead you on the straight and narrow. He's going to lead you in paths of righteousness for his namesake because he wants to show who he is that he is the almighty God, that he is more than enough. He's going to do that for us, praise the Lord. There is no fear, amen. amen. We have to remain in faith and stay out of fear because faith and fear are just the opposite. If you're in fear, then you're not in faith. So you have to make it a purpose and make a conscious effort to say, I'm not gonna fear. And you have to sometimes speak it out. You have to tell yourself, you have to say, no, I'm not going to fear. I have to do that sometimes when I'm dealing with circumstances. I start getting emotional or I start getting anxiety about things. I have to speak to myself, no, God said in his word. And I begin to quote his word over that circumstance. And then I claim it for my life. And I say, I will not fear. Amen. Amen. You can't rest on yesterday's faith. We cannot afford to think, okay, well, yesterday I read my Bible. Yesterday I prayed. Yesterday I quoted my scriptures. You got to get your faith renewed every day. And how does faith come? It comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. 
You've got to hear the word. You need to speak it because when you say it, you're going to hear it again and it's going to resonate on the inside of you. It's going to sink down into your spirit. It's going to become alive and right before you and you're going to be able to live it easier. Amen. You know, faith requires that we're not troubled. It's easy to look at circumstances. It's easy to look at everything and be troubled with it. But we cannot afford to fear. Do not be troubled. We're not able to let trials and tribulations leave us alone. They're just not going to do it. They're not going to leave us alone. We have to focus on God's word. We have to focus on the promises in the midst of all those situations that we're faced with. I, you know, there's a perfect example in Philippians 4, in verse 11, when Paul is writing to the church, and he is in prison, he's faced with all kinds of things, it's dark, he's, he's in prison, it's like he is all locked up, but there's things you have to understand he's going through as well, but he said this to the church, and he says, not that I speak from any personal need, for I have learned to be content through Christ, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or uneasy regardless of my circumstances. Amen. I mean, sometimes we think about that. Are we like that? Are we comforted? Are we not disturbed or not uneasy? Are we, are we all the bother about circumstances because of what we're facing? There is no fear in God. There is no fear. You know, faith isn't living a trial-free life. It's not living a trial-free life. It's for living victoriously in the midst of trials. That's what faith does. Amen. 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 Jesus said in this world, you're going to have tribulations. You're going to have them. They're going to be there. We're going to be faced with circumstances and situations every day of our life. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome them all. He didn't say, well, I've overcome a few of them and you might get through most of them, but you know, but he, no, he said he overcame them all. So we have victory in Jesus. And it's what we do in the midst of those circumstances or those trials that is the expression of our faith. So if you're standing in faith, you're going to know that you're going to be able to overcome all of those things, Amen. no matter what Amen. you're faith with faced with you are not to be in fear there is no fear in God if you're feeling disturbed if you're feeling anxious about something perhaps you're meditating on the wrong thing mm -hmm. you need to start meditating on what the word says what did God promise you and and go there amen, amen. stay out of that amen. other area focus on the word amen you see in his presence is fullness of joy and if you can't be in joy in the midst of circumstances, now I'm not saying, oh, lay aside all your emotions and all your other feelings. You're going to have those because God gave them to us. But it's what you do with those while you're in the midst of something. How are you going to respond to the situation? you got to take control. you got to get in the presence of the Lord. Because in his presence, mm -hmm. when you're in the presence of the Lord, when you're worshiping him, when you're reading his word, when you're praying and communicating with him, then you'll have fullness of joy because you're going to know that you know that you know that everything's going to be all right Amen. and God's on your side. Amen. Amen. He is working for us. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you got to speak to yourself. You got to speak to your mind. You got to tell it to be quiet. You got to tell yourself to stop thinking about the things you're thinking about because they're worrying. They're, they're fearsome. They're all these things that don't line up with the word of God. And it says, take control over your thoughts. Take control. Cast down those imaginations. Everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God's word. Take it by the by the handle, say, no, you will not have your way in my life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have to speak the word. Say, he is my provider. He is my healer. Amen. He rules in my heart with peace. Amen. You Amen. have to do that. And then in the midst of your circumstances, kind of like what Paul was in, in the middle of prison, he was content 
he was satisfied, not because he was in prison, because he knew that God was taking care of him. And God was ordaining his steps that were going to be perfect and on time and everything was going to be just right. He wasn't concerned. He wasn't afraid for his life. He knew that God was going to take care of him. You have to be the same way, content mm -hmm. in the middle of your circumstances, mm -hmm. knowing that God's purpose is working out a plan for you and be uh, listening to your heart, listen to God, do not be shaken, do not fear, amen. <clears throat> Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Think about it like this. If you've ever ordered anything online, maybe you've ordered a new shirt, or maybe you've even made reservations at a hotel somewhere. If you've ever ordered and done anything online, they always give you a confirmation number when you order, and they'll tell you this is your confirmation number. What that does, it assures you that's yours. You've bought it. It's coming to you. You have it. It's already yours. That hotel room is yours on the day that you booked it. That shirt is yours. You bought it. That blue shirt's coming to you. It's all yours. But if you, because you've got a confirmation number to prove it. Amen. Faith is the same way. Faith is a confirmation. It is that you've already received the things you've hoped Amen. for. You've already got it. It's yours. So you need to declare it. Praise God for it. It's yours. You're gonna. You're walking in it. You have it now. Because when it does show up, you've already started rejoicing. Amen. It's already going to be there. Declare you have Amen. it right now. Whatever your circumstance Amen. is. If it's healing you need in your body, start saying, By his stripes I'm healed. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's mine. I have it now. Amen. If it's finances, say, He supplies all of my need according to his riches Amen. in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. I am fully funded. I have everything Amen. I need to carry out the commission that God has called me to. Amen. Don't give up your faith because fear is going to try to do that. It's going to come in and try to take away what faith you have. That's just what it does. It's going to make you uneasy. It's going to make you uncomfortable. It's going to try to take away what faith you have. It's going to be those words that come across your mind. It's going to be people that might say things to you. It's going to be things that just happen in this world to try to draw you away from faith. You know, it's easy to toss the word around. It's easy to say, oh, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, the word says, and then you begin to just start quoting word. But you first have to understand the word has to be planted in your heart. The Bible says it's with the heart that man believes. You believe the word from your heart, and then you confess it with your mouth. Uh, Mark 4 is a great scripture to begin. In, in uh, verse 4, Jesus is telling us a parable about a farmer who goes out to sow some seeds. And he says, first he cast the seeds on the wayside, and the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell onto the gravel with no topsoil, and the seeds quickly sprouted. But when the days grew hot, the sprouts were scorched and withered because they had insufficient roots. Mm -hmm. Other seeds fell among the thorns. So when the seeds sprouted, so did the thorns, which crowded out the young plants, smothering them, and they didn't produce. But some of the seeds fell onto good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yield 30, some 60, and some even a hundredfold a hundred times what was planted. And then Jesus goes and he then begins to explain this parable. He says the seeds are the word of God. And where they're planted, the ground is the heart. And the ground which the seeds fall on, in this particular case, when he begins to talk about it, he talks about the beaten path that the seeds first fall on. That if you think about a path, a beaten path. It was like the the side of the road, the wayside where people walked all the time. And when you think about a, a path that somebody walks on, it's hard, it's compacted, and you put a seed there, it's just going to lay on top. It's not even going to go down into the ground. And that's why the birds can come easily and, and take it away. 
that's sometimes like a man's heart, a person's heart. It's hard. It's hard because maybe they've gone through circumstances that have been overwhelming in their life. Maybe they had things that happened to them back when they were a child or when they were a young adult. And then all of a sudden what it did is it caused them to have a hard heart. They were disappointed. They were uh, disillusioned. They were fearful. They had things that hurt their feelings, things over life. Listen, church, everybody has. Everybody has had feelings and things that have happened to them in life. But it's what you do in the midst of those that's going to determine if you're going to come out of it. You can decide. You can make the decision. Because when the seed gets planted on a hard heart, then the, you'll say, what's the use? What's the sense of believing? Because it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. God doesn't care. He's not watching. Nobody listens to me. So you have to understand, start tilling that ground, start walking in forgiveness, start getting yourself ready so you, your faith can grow in those areas. And then he starts talking about the seed that's sown on the gravel. That's representing people that receive it joyfully, but they're superficial. It's like, yeah, we go to church. Yeah, I'm going to church. I'm listening to the word today. But then they're not serious about the word. They don't take it to heart. They're just like they're one day they're on and the next day they're off. One day I'm a Christian. The next day I'm in the world. Oh, I want to go do this. Oh, I want to serve God. Oh, I think I want to go do that. It's like you're on again, off again. You can't be a no. Christian and be on again and off again. You have to be on God in the spirit with Jesus all the time. Because then when persecutions come, like it says, and trouble comes, you immediately fall away because your heart is to the place where you haven't let any seed grow down. You haven't let any seed go into the heart and it's not, uh, it can't grow because you haven't taken it. Amen. Then there is seed that's sown among the thorns and the thorns represent those who hear the word, but they allow the cares of life the deceitfulness of riches or the attraction of wealth, what they what it's called, and the desires for other things come in and choke that word. When those things are more greater than the desire for the word and desire to, to hear the word and grow in the word and to listen and be established in the word of God, then those things are going to choke out the word and it's not going to grow and you're not going to have faith. Why? Because here, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you've got to continue to hear the word. But the seed that's sown on good ground is where it goes into a person that is a doer of the word. They want to do what this, I want to change my life. I want to do what God calls me to do. It represents those people whose hearts are open to receive the word and then their lives begin to bear fruit. They begin to show the fruit of the Spirit in their life. They begin to exercise those things in their life. And then they have more, produ pro uh, more things that are produced in their life. Amen. You see, the seed of the Word must first be planted in your heart. It has to be water, watered and cultivated. And when you think about water, watered and cultivated, it's kind of like you plant the Word you go to church, you hear the word preach, or you listen online, whatever you're doing, to hear the word. And then maybe you listen again another time, and there's you say, oh, they preached that word last week. I heard that same word last week from so-and-so. I don't want to hear that again. Well, that's a mistake, because that's watering the word. Because you sometimes have to hear it, and hear it, and yeah. hear it. Amen. You see, to build your faith in that area. So it's okay to hear that same word over and over and over again because you're establishing your faith. You're growing stronger in that area. And if you're lacking in some area, that's why I say to you, go to the word in that specific place. If it's finances, healing, you want peace in your life, go to the word that talks about those things. Grab a hold of that word. Listen, read it, meditate on it, and let it become stronger in your build your faith stronger in that area amen and then what you can do is you can quote the word because you see all that's been planted 
now is being directed faith towards certain problems or certain mountains. You can address that mountain. You can say to that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea by faith not out of fear. You're saying it by faith. Why? Because you've planted that word in your heart. It's strong in your spirit and it's right there and you can grab a hold of it and say, I know by Jesus stripes I'm healed. Amen. I know that he died for my infirmities. He took those stripes for me. You can quote it. You can believe it. And now it's going to operate and it's going to attack that area that you're coming up against. Amen. See, it's what we call exercising our dominion. It's taking dominion over what God said we have dominion over. And then it's the power of God, not our dominion, but it's the power of God that backs that up. God comes along and says, yes, my word, I'm sending it. You've sent it forth. I'm going to back you up in what you've said because I'm backing up my word because I never lie and I never tell Amen. an untruth. Amen. Amen. You're backing up your faith. Praise the Lord. Now, right now, in this day and time, we're facing all kinds of adversities. And in this storm that we might face, or any storm maybe you're facing personally, it's not time to waver in faith. We cannot waver. We cannot. We cannot draw back. The word says in Hebrews 10.38, he takes no pleasure in those that draw back. Mm, that's right. You cannot please God if you pull back from your faith and from standing strong in faith in the word. We need to be bolder. We need to be stronger. Yeah. We need to be more faithful. We need to be more prayerful. We need to be more in tune in the spirit than ever before. It's not time to complain. It's not time to whine about things and what's going on in your government or not going on in your government or how people are responding or not responding or how what this happened or how that happened or your doctor's report or any other thing. You have to stand strong. Amen. You have to not listen to what the world is saying. It's time to put to use all those messages that God has given us from past ministers that even Pastor Michael, all those message to, messages that he preached, it's time to remain strong in faith in those. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, when Peter stepped out of the boat, there was a storm raging all around him. There was a mighty storm, but he stepped out of the boat and he did it in faith. He stepped out of the boat in faith. You and I are in the midst of stormy times. We got to step out of the boat in faith. Amen. 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 You cannot look on the boisterous wind. Don't look on the things that are blowing around you or things that are happening. Don't listen to all the news media and those things that people say and text you about or send you messages on. Don't listen to that. Amen. Listen to what God's word says. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He is always with us. And you know, when the 10 spies went into the land to spy out the land and they came back with a bad report, do you know Joshua and Caleb in the midst of that stood their ground? They said, God said, we are well able. Amen. We are well able to overtake those things. We are well able. Church, you and I are well able to go through this time in yes, our life. Yes. Somebody just recently said to me, we were created for this time. We were created and set here on this earth for this time, a time such as this. You and I are here for a reason. Listen, ask God what your reason is. Who are you supposed to minister to? Who are you supposed to speak to? What word of God are you supposed to give to somebody? Be that thing. Be that person. Be that reason that they come to know Christ. Be Amen. the one that draws them in. You know, when the city was surrounded with an enemy army, Elijah told his servant that there were more with them than there were against him. Do you know that then the eyes of that servant were opened up and they began to see the hills filled with horses and chariots of fire? 
I'm telling you this morning, there are more with us than there are yeah, against yeah, us. Hallelujah. There are more of God's God. grace and more of God's mercy and more of God's angels that surround us and keep us in yeah. peace and keep us and watching over us and watching over his word than there are against us. Do not be afraid. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Amen. We are the church. We are the church. Amen. Amen. We are well able mm. because he's already anointed us. He has equipped us. He has given us his word. He has given us his spirit. We have everything we need. Everything. Not just some things. We have everything we need to carry out his commission. Everything. Praise God. We can stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now this morning, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for joining me. I want to thank you for being here online with me. And you know, we're going to pray this morning at, together as we get off, uh, as we close. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to first pray for those who are in authority in our nation. I don't care if they agree or disagree with what I believe. I don't care if they agree or disagree with what you believe. We need to pray for them. Amen. They need the, They need. God. Amen. Amen. Father, we come before you on behalf of those in authority in our nation. We know and believe that they need God just like we need God. Father, we may not agree together with all the things that are happening, but we don't have to because we are in agreement with your word. And we know your word stands strong and your word will not fail. And your word goes forth as we press it out there. And we put it out there and it will not return to you void. But it's going to accomplish everything you sent it to do. Father, we trust you with all of our hearts. We pray for these people to have wisdom, understanding, counsel, might. That you uh, work in their behalf, Father. That you give us a peaceable nation. Yes. A peaceable time. Father yes. God, give us peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you and praise you that the adversity that has been uh, set loose in this country will be revealed by the Spirit of God. Yes. I thank you, Father, yes. for revealing the, the secrets, the plans, the strategies of the enemy to the right authorities, and they will be thwarted. They will be put down. They will put, be put asunder. Father, no evil shall, shall befall us. No enemy can come against us. Yes. I thank you, Father, and praise you, for greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. And we are strong in you and in the power of our of your yes. might. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We just give you praise for that. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we pray for peace across our cities, yes, across our country, across every every county. Father, our city, the one that we're living in, wherever you live, I want you to pray for your city Thank right you, Lord. now. Thank De baso brande eso ne minda sara vishata. Eso branda. Father, I thank you for for uh, raising up leaders, spiritual leaders across these cities yes. and for people to give their hearts over to yes. the Lord. We thank you for the great awakening. We thank you for people to come to know the Lord. Yes. We thank you, Father, as we pray for salvations in people's hearts. I thank you for miracles and signs and wonders. Yes, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for moving on our behalf. Praise Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for strength and stamina and boldness yes. to do what you've called us to do. We will Jesus. not fear. Thank That's you, right. Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We ask you to quicken us, quicken our hearts, quicken our minds. Bring us to remembrance of what the Word says in circumstances. Let the Word ever be present upon our lips. And as we minister yes, to Lord. others, let us have the leading of the Holy Spirit to know what to say, Yes. And what to do in every situation. Let Thank that you. be first and foremost on our mind and on our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, there are people that might be listening to the sound of my voice that are dealing with sickness in their body. I know you are the healer. I know you send your word and it heals them because Jesus sent the word and it healed. Well, Father, yes. we send the word right now across Hallelujah. these airwaves, yes. wherever they are, yes. that healing be manifested yes. in their yes. body. Right. Cancer cells, mm -hmm. you die in yes. the name of Jesus. A sickness and disease, <clears throat> infirmities, a flu-type uh, symptoms, you die in the name of Jesus. Yes. 
Yes. Power of God is manifested now in your bodies in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Thank the you. power of God is coming upon your bodies to yes. heal you now. Thank Some of you, you may Lord. be feeling Thank the you, warmth of God's anointing flowing down and in through your body. Yes. Maybe your lungs are feeling warm and you can breathe better right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I praise you for that healing power upon those bodies. I thank you that those knees are healed and strengthened, the joints, the marrow, basso, brasso, bura. Yes. Thank you, Father, for healing them in the name of Jesus. Oh, I give you praise. I give you praise. Thank I give you, you praise. Thank Father, you, thank you, Lord. I give you glory, Father. You're a good God, and we just worship you. We give you praise. We thank you, Father, for moving on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Now, I don't want to leave without giving someone an opportunity because whether you're listening now or you're going to listen in the future, I want to give you an opportunity to come to know Jesus, to make him Lord of your life. He is the reason. He's the reason we're here. He is the only reason. So we serve a risen God, a risen Savior. And so this morning you have an opportunity to take him as your Lord and Savior. That's the only way you're going to get to heaven. Jesus says he was the way to get into heaven. So we come to the Father and we believe that Jesus was the Son of God and that he was uh, dead and rose again and he's living at the right hand of the Father. And when we believe that in our heart and we say it with our mouth, then we are born again. So this morning I want to say a prayer and you can say it after me and you will be born again. Amen. By faith. You're just doing this by faith. Why? Yeah. Because we don't see. So we're doing it by faith. But that's how we receive. So let's say that. Father, Father in the name of Jesus, I repent for all of my sins. For all of my sins. Everything I've done. Everything I've done. That's been out of out of your pleasure. It's been out, out of your, your pleasure. pleasure. I repent. I repent. And right now, right now by faith, by faith, I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. I believe. I believe. He, is he is risen from the dead. He is alive. He is alive. He is my Savior. He is my Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let Thank us know you, if you receive Jesus. Send us a note online and let us know. Amen. We want to we want to bless you. We want to be able to give you a booklet. So if you just send us that note. Uh, if you want to give to Living Joy, you can do so. I want to encourage you. Continue to give to the Lord. Continue to sow your seed. You have to sow your seed in order to reap a harvest. You, it's just like what we talked about today. Finances are the same way. If you don't sow a seed, you're not going to reap his finances. If you don't give love, you're not going to get love. If you don't give a smile, you're not going to get a smile. There's, it's, there's, as long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. So this morning, I want to encourage you to give to the Lord. You can give to Living Joy at Living Joy Faith Center. And you can go to livejoy.org and press the green button and give that way. We love you. We, we want to thank God for you. And we want to believe that every seed that you've sown into living joy is bringing forth a harvest into your life and into your finances, a hundredfold return. Thank you for your giving to living joy. I just want to bless you this morning. I want to thank you for joining me. Thank I want you, you to be blessed in all of your ways especially today, and that you have a peaceful day, and may the Spirit of the Lord grant you grace and mercy, and I know that in his presence there is fullness of joy. I love you. Goodbye.